All right, what is up, guys? We're back for game two of Cloud9 versus Samsung Galaxy. We got Cloud9 now on the blue side for game two. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if they, if they banned out the Jin or they or they picked it up really early in the draft. Jin was very strong. They go for the Tam Kench, Victor are their first two bands. And the Olaf. Okay, so they were worried about the Olaf. Samsung Galaxy did not change their bands. They went for Nidalee. Syndra, Rise, and then we're looking at the first pick via Jin on the hover. Um, I think that's fine. Sneaky definitely got his ass kicked in that matchup between Caitlyn and Jin. Yep, Kuve instantaneously goes towards the Kennen, and uh, Core JJ goes towards the uh, Karma. I actually wouldn't be surprised if Samsung Galaxy just played the it, near the same comp. Um, obviously, they're going to have to substitute the Olaf for something else. And then they'll probably substitute the Jin for maybe Caitlyn, maybe Lucian. Or actually, probably Ezreal. No, that's what they're going to go for the Caitlyn. Okay. I like this pickup of the, the Cassiopeia on Jensen, just to take that away. Interesting. They go for the, the Skarner on the Samsung Galaxy side. I'm curious to see what they're going to pick up for impact because that's that matchup's going to really be important. It's going to be really important that they get impact ahead. Yeah, the Jace. That, that makes sense. I don't know if I like Smoothie on the Nami, though. I guess they want to do that because he got kind of smashed on the Alistar because uh, Karma was just poking him out, and the Nami is a good counterpick to the, the Karma. Oh, is Crown going to go for the, the the same matchup as last time? Interesting. Okay, so Crown goes for the Oriana. Jensen goes for the Cassiopeia. We'll see, uh, see who can play that matchup better. Okay. Um, I think both teams did did really well in the pick band phase. I don't think there was any mistakes in the pick band phase. The only thing I'm worried about is that is that Medios was completely ineffective on Rek'Sai in game one. He's gotta up his aggression. He has to be much more aggressive in game two. He can't just sit back and farm because last game, um. Ambition had equal CS to him, but he was just way more active on the map. So, uh, we'll see. Alright, so top lane, Jace versus Kennen. I actually hate playing this matchup when I play Kennen. Jace is just... He's mana gated early, and that's, that's kind of what you have to play around. But Jace is just... He's really challenging to play against because if you try to all in him, he can just knock you away and then he can kind of poke you down. He does outrange the Kennen. Um, and I actually have a, I have a lot of trouble with Jace when I play Kennen. As far as Rek'Sai versus Skarner, Skarner really doesn't kick into high gear until he gets a couple items. Uh, I think Rek'Sai is definitely better in the early game. But if uh, Medios doesn't create an early game advantage, then Skarner will get really, really strong. He's just got a lot of CC. He's got that Impale. Good row. Yeah, you can see that impact. So that's the problem with the the Jace versus Cannon matchup, is that uh, Jace can engage onto you, but you really can't engage onto him because he'll always just knock you backwards. This is good. This is actually pretty good. It looks like Jensen and Impact are really up in their game. <sighs> I 
Poor JJ is just hitting a lot of those uh, those cues. actually been pretty good i every single lane is stepping up their aggression every single lane is doing a lot better for uh for cloud nine it looks like they're definitely not rattled by their uh loss earlier i would expect i think he back in there okay that's interesting Good room. Get the smite for um, ambition. That's good. Everything's going a lot better for Cloud9 this game. <clears throat> this is good. Okay. So this is what I, exactly what I wanted to see. So Jensen is pushing the Orianna under tower. And then I expect to see a a roam. I expect to see Rek'Sai going bot lane. Cassiopeia trying to set up something bot lane. Yeah, I don't agree with that. See, media should be... Um, in my opinion, he should be bot lane right now. Because it's obvious that Ruler and uh, Core JJ want to push out this lane. And Sneaky and Smoothie could just let them. And then that would just set up a really easy gank in bot lane. This is good. Bot lane and mid lane's pushed up. Shockwave, yep, had to flash it. So the 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 disadvantage of that is that um, Sneaky's gonna fall a little bit further behind in CS. So that play wasn't as clean as it could have been. But I mean, they were able to secure the objective, and they only gave up one flash, I believe. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a really challenging matchup for uh the Kennen cuz uh Jace is actually doing exactly what he should be doing. Uh he goes for the the early um hex drinker. And it just makes it it makes it really hard for the cannon to burst him out. Good invade by Meteos. He knows the Skarner's on the top side of the map. I feel like Meteos is focusing on way too much on just farming and counter jungling rather than getting his lanes ahead. Right, like a Rek'Sai is not going to carry the game. That's good. That actually might be first tower.
Yeah, unfortunately this game is not... Ooh, that's good. That should be a kill. Ult, ult, ult. I don't... Yeah, I don't understand why the ult didn't come out. Yeah, I don't understand why Smoothie used his ultimate, but Sneaky didn't. They could have forced him out of lane, and they could have gotten... Well, I guess they forced him out anyway. But if you you guarantee that force out of lane, you can possibly get some damage on bot tower, and you definitely get Drake. So now I'm hoping that uh, Meteo starts playing around the top side of the map, since that top tower is really low health. Wow. Good job by their uh, Galaxy's bot lane. Now it's going to be a race to see who can get the tower first. Okay, good. They got it. That was really well played. They flash the tidal wave, and that allows them to get the uh, the karma root. Well done. This is actually really good. For uh, Cloud Nine. Well done. It's a little bit unfortunate that he actually went for the ultimate because he really didn't need to. Um, Crown was dead no matter what. And if he had saved that ultimate, he could have used his ultimate to zone the Caitlyn off of mid tower, and they could have got a little bit more damage on mid tower. <sighs> Alright. So Medios needs to start make start playing around bot side of the map. Looks like they're trying to prioritize this infernal Drake. There's a lot of wasted motion here for Cloud9. Yep, there we go. Good. Miss the smite. So, the problem is, is that when I was talking about a little bit earlier, where it seemed like Cloud9 is just walking around a lot, um, that was just a huge problem because they weren't, they didn't have the side lanes pushed that entire time, and actually, Sneaky lost a considerable amount of farm and bot lane. And now Samsung makes a good rotation to top lane. And they should be able to get this tower. Maybe not. It's going to get really low though. So this is smart. This is actually really smart by uh, Samsung Galaxy. I feel like the laners are doing much better in this game, but I still feel like Medios is not pulling his weight. Ooh. Mm. 
My goodness. Wow. That's really well done. I actually might slow that down and for the replay. Flash. Get the stun on three people into the Oriana ult. Yeah, that was a perfect fight for uh, Samsung Galaxy. Ooh, that's heartbreaking. That's really heartbreaking. Cloud9 was so close to breaking that game open. They just didn't they didn't push the objectives um, hard enough. If they had gone up two towers to zero, they would have been in a... I'm not going to say they would have won the game, but they would have been in such a great position to, to win the game. But because um, they kind of wasted a lot of time, they kind of threw that lead because they... You know, if you just delay against a good team, the good team is eventually going to make a play that's going to punish you. And that's exactly what Samsung Galaxy did. This gold swing is so... Ugh, that's so bad. Now they're going to get Ocean Drake. And then they'll get uh, Bot Tower. This is really frustrating. Top lane's pushing against um, Cloud9. Mid lane is pushing against Cloud9. So what Samsung Galaxy is going to do is they're just going to stall. They're not going to do anything stupid. They're not going to tower dive. They're just going to stall, stall, stall. Yeah, so that's good. That's good that Cloud9 is engaging because they realize that all that Samsung Galaxy wants to do is stall. That was a huge mistake. That was a huge mistake to try and dive that tower. Like, all you got to do is just freaking stall. You can see that the mini waves are crashing into the mid and the top in him. Hmm. Yeah, right there with Kuve. That was a huge mistake that ended up costing them two kills. Both Crown and Kuve died. <sighs> Alright. Well, that definitely helps. That allows Cloud9 to come back a little bit. But they still got a really huge up uphill battle in front of them. And it's not really the kills that matter that much. It's the towers. The, them being down five towers to one, it allows... Uh, Samsung Galaxy control so much of the map. Like, it, it's just really dangerous for Cloud9 to push up to try and take either mid tower or bot tower right now. There's just, you know, they don't have any towers to fall back on. That's an interesting ult. The Kuve's got a level advantage on impact. And uh, it looks like the Kennen's getting big enough that the Jace can no longer fight him. That's one of the other problems with the Jace is he starts to fall off in the late game while Kennen will continue to scale. Um, unless you're just really far ahead on the Jace, which uh, impact is not. Uh, 
So I would expect impact to go to bot lane, push out that wave. I don't know why impact's just standing around Baron. They're not going to be able to get it right now. And that bot lane wave is going to become a huge issue in just one more wave, so like another 30 seconds. Cloudine is doing a really horrible job controlling the side lanes. They're going for this this play in mid lane. They already lost a tower. And look at top lane and bot lane. Look at those huge waves in top lane and bot lane. So Cloud9 is, is kind of falling apart right now at the seams. They're missing so much farm. They're missing so much experience. Yeah, and finally Jace goes bot lane, but he missed all that farm. He missed like two or three waves worth of farm. He could be level 18 right now. Keep pushing. You've got vision control. You see that Kennen is... Uh, This is a good TP. What? What was that? Alright. Huge um, communication mistake from Cloud9. Right. Either you say, Jungler, go in and smite steel and sacrifice yourself uh, if necessary. Or you say, we team fight. If you're going to have your jungler go for a smite steal, there's no point in having your top laner teleport. Just have um, just have impact continue to push. And you go for the smite steal. If you go for the team fight, you don't have your freaking jungler dive in by himself. You wait for the TP to complete. You fight five on five. So that was just a huge botched play by Cloud9 that is going to wind up having them lose the second game and now they are down 0 to 2 and uh they're in a really bad position so yeah cloud9 is making they had a, a much better early game but they just made a lot of mistakes in the mid to late game that cost them that game they were in a very good position to possibly win that game so Hopefully they can focus on the positive and uh, come out in ga game three and get you know at least one win in this series. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on the channel, please subscribe. I hope you all have a great day. This is Ramonium signing off.